I'm sorry. Yes. It's a very difficult opening to this show because we've just learned that someone, I mean, many people in Gaza have been murdered by the Israeli genocide taking place there, but we've just learned that Rafet El Arir, a Palestinian academic, one of their top academics, who's a wonderful person who I had the honor of getting to meet years ago when he was visiting uh, the United States, uh, one of the smartest people I've ever met, has been killed by the Israelis. And according to a lot of people who are close to him and his family, they're saying he was targeted for assassination. Yeah. I, I don't you know what else to say. 17,000 people, of course, over 17,000 killed in Rafat, who is, you know, in many ways, a prophetic voice, a great poet, an academic. Uh, you know, he was featured in many of the Electronic Intifada live streams in the early days of the conflict. His Twitter account especially, I think, has been one that many people around the world, at least those who speak English, have been watching very closely for the insights, the information, the reporting. He already had lost his home and so much more. He has a family. Uh, on Twitter, you can find him at or well, his, at I translate one two three. His pin tweet is a is a poem that he wrote. Uh, I think specifically for this occasion. Unfortunately, posted several. Can I read? Can I read it? Yeah, it's a beautiful sure, poem. Can Please I read do. it? Um, I'm pulling it up right now. Hang on, but this is just. You know, he also is somebody who was, he was actually editing the articles from Gaza for the Electronic Intifada and his pinned tweet right now, uh, if you go to his Twitter, it says, if I must die, let it be a tale. And it's, I mean, it's a short uh, poem. It says, if I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings, make it white with a long tail so that a child somewhere in Gaza, while looking heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad who left in a blaze, and bid no farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself, sees the kite, my kite you made, flying up above, and thinks for a moment an angel is there, bringing back love. If I must die, let it bring hope, let it bring a tale. And, you know, in some ways, this is, like, devastating news, and I, it's like, all I want to do is cry right now, but we cannot let these people in Gaza die in vain like we can't let this all happen for like something has to come out of this something has to change uh, we can't like we cannot we cannot allow this to happen and nothing change I don't know what else to say besides that because at this point it's like I mean yesterday the State Department spokesperson Matt Miller was asked to comment on whether it was a war crime that the Israelis let babies in incubators starve to death. And he called it a tragedy and blamed Hamas. That's where we're at. It's Hamas's fault when Israel kills babies. Like, I don't understand how much longer this is going to be allowed to go on. Like, the world is literally saying, the United States is saying, that these people, that Palestinians, that Arabs, don't matter that you can just exterminate them. I'm sorry. This is just very upsetting. No, it's it's a very difficult I just issue. How many more people in Gaza need to die for it to matter and for it to stop? Yeah. I'm no, so I sorry. think No, you don't need to apologize. I mean, I think that this is how people feel everywhere and rightfully so because I mean, it's it's uh, it's an unspeakable set of crimes that are taking place. And as we know from the reporting that we've seen, this is all deliberate. Uh, as the high-level Israeli sources told the 972 magazine that every single person, if a three-year-old in Gaza dies, that's because someone decided her life did not matter. And I think that's the important thing to realize here. This is not actually collateral damage in the sense that's always put out there, like people who just happen to die. These are all direct and deliberate decisions. Over 17,000 people have died. And of course, Rafat has very, very sadly uh, become one of them. But as he said, if he is to die, let it become a tale. And I think it's important that we spread his words and we continue to talk about these issues. And I think everyone continue to do whatever you can do um, to address this, this, this issue.